Dr. Tan Wu Ming. So the tripartite partners support all employees, including those requiring dialysis treatment, to enter and remain in the workforce while managing their personal responsibilities and circumstances. We do so by promoting the adoption of flexible work arrangements and uh, work-life strategies, as well as ensuring that such employees are not discriminated against at the workplace. In 2020, 93% of firms offered some form of formal or ad hoc for flexible work arrangements to employees. To further entrench the implementation of such work arrangements, the Tripartite Alliance for Fair and, Employment, uh, for Fair and Progressive Employment Practices, CAFEP, actively promotes the Tripartite Standard on Flexible Work Arrangements to companies through its publicity campaigns, briefings to members of trade associations and chambers, and also conduct workshops. Progressive employers who adopt this standard are required to inform their employees of the types of flexible work arrangements available, such as flexi time and flexi load, which allow employees, including those with medical conditions, to vary their working hours and job functions to manage their work and personal responsibilities. To ensure greater success in the implementation of flexible work arrangements, employees are also encouraged to proactively engage their supervisors on their personal responsibilities and circumstances. This allows employers and employees to discuss and explore varied flexible work arrangements that meet employers' business needs while enabling employees to manage their personal responsibilities. Employees requiring dialysis treatment or having any other medical conditions are protected against discrimination through the Tripartite Guidelines on Fair Employment Practices, the TGFEP, which is based on the principles of fair and merit-based employment practices at the workplace. Employees who feel that they have encountered workplace discrimination should lodge a complaint with TAFET. Thank you, sir. I'm sorry if you could stand up when you raise your hand because we can't see your face from here. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Speaker, and thank you, SMS, for the comprehensive uh, reply. I would just like to ask a question. Uh, with the concern of rising number of uh, individuals needing dialysis, whether uh, MOH and MOM uh, will consider and what kind of measures they might, uh, you might implement for more upstream measures such as uh, workplace education on the risk factors leading to uh, di uh, kidney diseases. I think a lot of laymen are not very aware of, uh, for example, common chronic diseases like diabetes can lead to uh, chronic kidney diseases if not well managed, and the chronic kidney diseases, uh, if worsened, would require dialysis. So I'd like to check if there are any upstream measures that uh, are implemented in the workplace. Thank you. So I think uh, going upstream to prevent consequences of disease is something that we do in a very broad-based manner at MOH. I think uh, if the member remembers, we do have a war on diabetes and the Diabetic Task Force has been formed a couple of years back at least to really look at uh, comprehensively engaging people through lifestyle changes, through exercise, uh, through stakeholders in the community as well as in the medical fraternity to make sure we target the management and treatment of diabetes to prevent the downstream consequences of uh, renal impairment and kidney failure as a consequence. Um, so engaging uh, employers and employees at the workplace to continue to adopt healthy lifestyle is part of the work of uh, educating the public and we will continue to do so through many of our partners and stakeholders as well as through the labour movement. Thank you, sir. Mr. Shahril Taha. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker and uh, SMS 
Kopokun for his reply. So I'd just like to ask a question of, uh, can the ministry also consider how we can work together with companies to encourage the employment of our dialysis patients through flexible work arrangements? For example, can the ministry consider a scheme for call centres to hire our dialysis patients as work-from-home call uh, operators? Because in past days, I have a few uh, residents who are dialysis patients in their late 30s and early 40s. They're still able to work, but they struggle to find employment as their dialysis is usually three or four times a week. So can we encourage more employment for our able, less fortunate residents by leveraging on flexible work arrangements? Thank you. SMS call. So I thank the member for his uh, question. I think it's quite clear that we all desire to make sure that we help the vulnerable amongst us, whether it's a a person on kidney dialysis or a person with physical disability to continue to remain in the workforce. Um, but I think we do understand that there is a very uh, diverse kind of uh, workplace arrangements and different job roles and different requirements as well. So legislating a requirement like this would be probably challenging to implement because different businesses and different uh, operating models may have different needs. What we should do though is to continue to engage uh, with our employers through also the uh, uh, SNAF, National Employers Federation, as well as our labour movement, to continue that conversation and helping employers to look at uh, redesigning their jobs so that more people with disability or even those who need flexible arrangement for dialysis treatment can continue to be meaningfully engaged and contribute to the workforce and also to the company's operations as well. So this is an ongoing effort. We'll continue to engage our stakeholders. Thank you, sir.